folks, boxwoods have been destroyed in our area due to blight and infestation of pests. I'm Gary Hardy. And I'm Andrew Piner. And today we're going to discuss with you three replacements for your dead or dying boxwoods. So boxwoods have long been a popular choice for homeowners, property owners, and their landscape beds, right? Uh, but with the spread of boxwood blight and the infestation with pests and this and that, um, people are having to replace them, and there's thousands of replacements. There's yep. not enough time in the day right. to discuss them. So what do we use at Bruner's to replace boxwoods. Well, that's really client dependent and what the property already has on it. You don't want to start throwing strange things over here when the rest of the property looks a certain way. But, you know, burning bushes are a good choice. Uh, glow bar providing, depending on the area. Um, and then um, my brain just farted there. Viburnum. There, my, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, which way are we going over? And you're saying there's thousands of bushes. And I'm going, okay. You know. So, so yeah, folks. So Bruner's, we burning bushes, Dwarf globe arborvitae and viburnums. So let, let's jump right into the burning bushes, folks. We're going to talk to you about burning bushes. Why are they a great replacement, Andrew? Well, depending on how big you want them to be, if you want to use them for a uh, privacy hedge or just as a nice small shrub, you can easily do both, If depending on how how you maintain them. If you can just let them grow, Mother Nature is going to keep on trucking, as I said. you know, So it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger until it gets to its mature height. Uh, and at that point, if you want to keep it trimmed down low, it is a nice, uh, a nice small shrub for a small mulch bed. And then we have beautiful fall color. They turn bright reds and oranges and yellows in fall, and they're pretty to look at. Yeah, we have uh, a really pretty burning bush on the side of our house. It gets that like purple hue in the fall. It's 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 gorgeous. I I like I like it actually when the leaves actually fall. Because then it's like a mulch in the bed. Yeah. It's like a red mulch a bright almost. Red mulch. It's really cool. Um, another thing, though, with boxwoods, so since we do mostly commercial stuff at Bruner's, boxwoods are very low maintenance right. and drought resistant. Right. Like commercial properties, we can put those out there in their landscape beds, and we don't have to necessarily worry about watering them or water right. source or irrigation. Whether they're irrigated or anything like that. Yep. And that's a big deal. Yep. Um, one of the things clients have to understand though with boxwoods is yes, they get huge. They do. Um, but if you keep them trimmed, if you keep them trimmed, they will stay small. They will stay below your windows. They will stay below your gutters, but you have to maintain them with, with proper trimming. Um, you if you want to learn, bushes. Huh? You mean what did bush, I say? Boxwoods? boxwoods again? Sorry. Burning bushes, <laughs> boxwood replacement. But yeah, right. uh, in our last video, we talked about proper trimming of shrubs, right. right? So folks, if you want to learn how to properly trim shrubs, check out our last video on shrub trimming. But yeah, proper maintenance of those shrubs, right. it's important. And if you don't keep them trimmed at the proper height, so if you want them for screening, right? Um, if you don't keep them trimmed the way you want them, you will never be able to trim them lower again to make them look fantastic. I mean, burning bushes are more resilient than others. You can hit those pretty hard in, in early spring and take them back. Now, mind you, they're going to be ugly for a little while, but they, they can be pruned back uh, quite a bit in, at the right time of year. What's your favorite type of burning bush before we move on to the next shrub replacement? I don't think I have a personal favorite myself. I like the compact little Moses. Those are, um, and don't let the name fool you folks, although they are compact and they do they say just, little Moses, they will get five, six feet tall oh yeah. if you don't trim them. And like I said, un, 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 unattended to mother nature is always going to win. She's going to keep on growing. All right, folks, it is that time again for the Bruner's customer service corner. This is a time that I'll ask Andy a question that maybe he's getting from some of our customers um, when they call into him. So today, the question has to do with planting. Andy, what is one of the biggest questions you get from a homeowner that may be calling you just for advice when they're trying to choose shrubs for their landscapes? 
Well, I, for the most part, you know, the internet is evil and a good thing at the same time. Pinterest, I think, is one of the scarier things for me because I get landscapes. Like, I saw it on Pinterest, but um, for the most part, I get what can I plant in, in my area there. So the easiest thing I tell people for research is we're climate zone six here. So we have other places in the world that have the same climate zone. So we can get certain strange plants. So, uh, we have a client uh, who's growing banana trees in her front yard. They will grow here. You don't see them very often. You go, huh, is that a banana tree? But uh, things like that to just help them along in their research rather than me just throwing out random things and them trying to write it down and then go search the name and then see whether they like it or not. That's the easiest way I can get them headed down the right path. Yeah, a lot. I noticed that people will go and find landscape pictures and say, I want this, not realizing what they're picking grows in Arizona. Right. <laughs> We're Ohio. It gets very cold here. Uh, so like Japanese maples, they're zone five, zone six. If we get a really, 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 really bad winter, people's Japanese maples are going to be damaged. They're right. possibly die. They are not a 100% zone six. Or if they pick the wrong species, of some, because some species of any plant Won't grow grows here. in different zones. So, like, uh, there's a, a plant called cana. There's a rainbow cana, but it's tropical and it won't grow here. But it's beautiful, and I would love it, and I can't have it. Well, cana in general, um, it grows best if it's up next to your foundation here in Ohio. Because if it's not next to the foundation of your home and it's out in the middle of your yard, it will die because the cold ground will destroy the pod mm. in the ground. It, and straight line winds will topple and, them over. It'll topple them over. I love cana. Mm. One of my favorite plants. Um, ours at our house, it takes a while for it to grow, for it to wake up because of the harsh winters. My neighbors and the birds volunteered into my yard, so can't complain. <laughs> All right, folks. That right there was your customer service corner. Now back to the video. All right, that brings us to our next uh, boxwood replacement, our number two the Dwarf Globe Arborvitae. Tell us about the Dwarf Globe Arborvitae, Andy. I like them depending on the placement of them. They, they're not too fond of having wet feet, as the saying goes. Uh, so you want to be careful and not plant them right under your downspouts and things of that nature. But they're very low maintenance. Just They're pretty all year round. They're an evergreen, so they don't turn into sticky little balls of nothing over the winter. Uh, and unless you want to change the shape of them, you really don't have to do a whole lot with them. I love the word Arborvitae. I prefer Thuja. We'll see. Our, 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 our variety, I, I, our variety, I, I can't say it. Like when I said the dwarf globe arbor variety, I mumbled it. It's a, it's a hard word to say. It makes me sound like I'm a ginger pirate. Arbor variety. Arbor variety. <laughs> God, we're turds. <laughs> so uh, dwarf globe arbor variety, they're low maintenance. Right. Uh, they get like in the wintertime, like a bronze type of depending a hue on, as well depending so on you, which ones uh, the fire chiefs definitely turn like a, an orangey bronze color that, that are have a little bit of a change there they're pretty so there's a, there's a number of different variations of them uh, some some don't change at all and some are the same all year round and then there's others like the fire chief that are pretty color the fire chief so is that that's just a trade name yeah gotcha um so i am really not that experienced with the dwarf globe arbor i um uh, i do know that they only grow so tall they're not like uh the burning bush that they'll get eight foot tall right they they're made and and designed to be they're grown to be small so but when people think arbor they're automatically sometimes Green think giants the, the large yeah. thujas and folks that is the scientific name thuja, thuja. for the arbor um, but don't get confused. There are small arborvitae, and there are arborvitae that get, what, 30 feet tall almost, the the green, green giants. giants. Yeah. yeah. Those things are crazy. But as far as replacements for boxwoods, a dwarf globe arborvitae is a great drought-tolerant plant right. that you can put underneath window seals. You can put it out in the middle of your yard. Like we said with the bo with the burning bushes, I mean, I keep wanting to say boxwood. Well, that was with the burning main topic. Bush. Uh, but like with the burning bushes, yeah. you don't really need a water source yep. for the Mother Nature takes care of that for the most part. And they will die if you overwater them. Yeah, Arborvitae. Yeah. Don't like having wet feet. They 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 hate it. They hate it. Um, so I I think it's a great alternative. Mm -hmm. 
The next one, box right, alternative. Um, pest resilient, pest resistant, deer resistant. Um, deer resistant, which is big here in the Miami Valley, Montgomery County, Warren County. Just Green saw County seven areas. of them run across 48 right near us here. Yeah, I live in West Carrollton, and you see them and coyotes just running down the street. Yep. I but you know what? They're not running towards. They're right. not running towards the dwarf globe arborvitae <laughs> because they're deer resistant. Right, right. <laughs> All right, Andrew, our third and final boxwood replacement shrub that we're going to talk about today are viburnums. When you're considering viburnums, what is a benefit of having viburnums in your landscapes? I mean, many of them flower and are quite pretty. Uh, and also it depends on where your placement's going to be and what's type of viburnum you're going to be planting and if you're going to be maintaining it yearly or you're going to let it go because there are some species of it that will grow into your gutters and into your house depending on how long you leave them go but many, um, many of them have very pretty flowers and there are some double blooming ones that bloom twice so it's really personal preference in that in that, in that sense so folks you have to be very careful and make sure you hire a professional when you're choosing your viburnum because if you're replacing boxwoods that are up next to your house you want to make sure you pick the proper viburnum, or you may not want to use viburnum at all. You may want right. to use one of the other two. Viburnum may be a good replacement for the larger boxwoods that you might have, like as a screening or a, or a fence hedgerow. line. Yep. Um, one good thing with viburnums is they're really good at breaking the wind. Mm. Uh, they're like if you allow them and you get some of the larger species, you can use them as a windscreen. Yep. Um, and. You know, bees and butterflies like them, you know, and the, and the they flowers do. are good. So you're you're helping Mother Nature there in that, right? Actually, of the three replacements, they're the only actual flowering mm -hmm. uh, shrub that we have on there. And viburnums, they're very resilient, but they do die as they get older. Right. Um, they're not one of those shrubs that you're going to have for 60 years. Um, it's it's going to die at some point. They, they age out. Uh, but they are very disease resi resilient, resistant. There's over 200, but resistant. There's over 200 species of them. Are there really that many? <laughs> wow. That's why I say wow. it's, it, you got to look and see what the mature height is, how big they grow, tall and wide, so that you know it's proper placement in your mulch beds or in your front yard. You know, you can use them as a tree in a, in a sense. If you will let them go, they'll get uh, that big. And with that, it's really important to know where you're getting your shrubs. And where the professional that may be planting your landscape gets mm -hmm. their shrubs. I don't have a problem with the big box stores, but as a commercial grounds maintenance professional, we use the nurseries that the box stores get their products from. Right. We like to go out to Brown and Sons. Love them out there. Um, out out in the um, for the hard to find things, we go to our competitor, Siebenthalers, and we'll buy things from their nursery. For our perennials, we go to Winger Lawn Nursery. Yep. And then there's also, for those very hard-to-find things, we'll go right to the source. We'll go out to Acorn Farms in Columbus. Right. Um, Acorn Farms is really one of the providers for a lot of the nurseries around here. Uh, we also will go, what is that, Green? Um, what's the place out there in Enon that, or New Carlisle? Um, Ohio Nursery Exchange? Yeah, Ohio Nursery Exchange. Used to be Scarfs. Yeah, it used to be Scarfs. Yep, Dan that, out there is great. That's a great place to go to for some of those hard to find shrubs as well. But vi viburnums are a great choice. Uh, they're aesthetic. They're functional. They do a lot of a lot of various things. They also right. they increase your curb appeal. Give you a wide variety of options to choose from. Lots of colors as well. Um, I notice the majority that I find are white. Well, but if white you look properly, you can get the purples. I think there's some pink as well. There's pinks and reds in there. Um, and that also depends on who you're talking to, if they're colorblind or not. That is true. <laughs> I believe some viburnums also have a berry that come off of them. Um, hard to find, but in my research, they flower and some of them berry. Hmm. So I have not seen that one myself. Yeah, I've, I've personally not seen it. I just found it in some of the research that, I, that I've that i done over, over the years when looking for shrubs. But I've personally never seen it, but they say that they're known for their beautiful clusters of flowers and their berries but huh. all right andy as the viewers can see at bruners we tend to use viburnums 
burning bushes, dwarf globe arborvitaes, and a lot of our proposals when we go to replace boxwoods. Yep. So, folks, make sure that you hire a professional like Bruner's Lawn and Services if you need to replace your dead or dying boxwoods. We know what we're doing. We will get rid of those boxwoods properly. That way they don't get ground up into mulch, which then gets placed back into the mulch beds. It's very important that you pick the proper plant for the proper placement and the proper landscapes. Right. I'm Gary Hardy. And I'm Andrew Piner. And we are with Bruner's Lawn and Services. And always remember, satisfaction matters.